Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today I want to show you a deadly combination that totally changed my life when it comes to mixing and helped me solve a couple of problems that I've always been struggling with in my productions. Hopefully it's going to do the same for you. Here's what I mean. So I have a weakness for these really sparkly synthesizers that have these nice resonances like this. Right, it's so lovely and spacious and ambient. And I built a little arrangement around that. But the problem with that is whenever I try to make that louder in mastering and I play that back, especially on a cheaper speaker like my phone, it would start distorting so fast. And that is because if we just check out the frequency spectrum of the sound really quick, it has these insane peaks here, right? Now these peaks make the tone of the synthesizer incredibly pure and rich. But at the same time, this also introduces a lot of problems because as soon as I try to make this louder, you see this frequency would start clipping, right? And this is something that I've always been struggling with until recently when I started to use Pro EQ and Spectrum Meter in tandem. So what I did, I just went to Studio One's browser like always. I went to the effects section and I dragged in one instance of Pro EQ by dragging and dropping it onto the channel and then one instance of Spectrum Meter onto the same channel. Now, you might wonder if you're using Studio One, why do I do that? Because as you can see here in Pro EQ, I also have the Spectrum Meter available and even the 12 octave one, which is the one that I like to use because there you get a correlation of frequency to pitch here on the keyboard. So what's the point of having the Spectrum Meter after the Pro EQ? Well, I'll tell you. The difference is that here you get this amazing crosshair, right? And this crosshair allows you to pinpoint the frequencies to the pitch immediately. So if I see that this peak is occurring right here, I can just hold my crosshair in the spectrometer on the note D4 and it tells me that the problem lies in the frequency range of 570 to 604 hertz, right? I wouldn't be able to get this information from here, from the Pro EQ 3. So what can I do with this information? Well, I can now go to the mid frequency band of Pro EQ, for instance, and dial in 570, the exact frequency that spectrometer was displaying to us. And now we click on dynamic mode. That is another piece of the puzzle because we don't want to attenuate that frequency all the time. We only want to interfere when it's necessary. And that's exactly what dynamic mode allows us to do. Only when the sound or that particular frequency is passing the level that we're setting, only then it's being attenuated, right? And that would look like this. So you see Pro EQ3 is now only treating the problem as soon as it occurs and stops treating it when it's not an issue. This keeps the sound just as rich and clean as it was before, but without those pesky peaks that would come to bite us later in mastering. Now, you might wonder, why should I do that with an EQ when we also have a multiband compressor in Studio One? And that is because the dynamic EQ, you can really dial that in so fine. You can really build a notch that really just takes out this one frequency range with surgical precision, whereas the crossover frequency points of a multiband band compressor are much more broad and not really suited for such surgical interventions. Hopefully you got something from this whenever you're struggling with some pesky resonances, which can also occur in pianos, acoustic guitars and all kinds of instruments. Try this combination of spectrometer to find the problem and Pro EQ3 for treating it. And hopefully you're going to find it as much of a game changer as I did. Thank you for watching.